Hi, this is Jack Lifton, and, and today I have the pleasure of speaking with Rowena Smith, who is the Managing Director of ASM, Australian Strategic Materials. And Rowena, I, I have an immediate question for you, and I, I'm not expecting you to really answer what I, uh, I'm hoping. Uh, you have an arrangement or a joint venture, or you have some corporate a uh, relationship with the Korean company Chiron. Is that correct? Uh, no. No, the, I'm not familiar with Chiron. What's the name of the Korean company you, you're you're involved with in the metal making business? Our metal making business is actually a hundred percent equity ourselves. It's not a joint venture. Really? Um perhaps, yeah, it it, it is. Um okay. What what I think perhaps um, you're referring to is that we've got a, a research and development team in Korea as well that is co-located there with our metals facility and we're developing our own innovative technology to do metallization in a very low carbon way. And that did originate as a joint venture with one of the professors at one of the universities there in Korea. Mm -hmm. um, so we we started that as a joint venture about 10 years ago. But three years ago, we actually purchased that joint venture. Oh. And that's now a fully owned um, entity. We have all the IP. We have all of the personnel. And as I say, they're co-located with the metals plant. Um, but then off the back of that technology innovation, we committed to doing the metals plant ourselves. So, yep, that's a fully... Um, fully owned entity uh, ourselves. H having said that, Jack, we did get uh, significant support from the Korean government, both at the local level, the Chumbukdo province gave us a lot of support with identifying property and helping us with permits. And we got assistance uh, from the Korean Development Bank with a loan to help us uh, get started. So we've certainly had support from Korea, but yep, that, that business is ours. Yeah. Are, so is there a metallizing plant in Korea at this point? There is. We're, we're up and going. Not only is it there, but it's producing and it's delivering to customers. We've got uh, neodymium presidium metal that is being supplied to a Korean magnet producer. First delivery started in September of last year. Mm -hmm. And then more recently, we've commissioned the strip caster that makes that specialist alloy uh, the NDFEB that goes into the permanent magnets um, that are used for the wind turbines and the electric vehicles. And uh, we've got two customers now, both in the States, uh, for those alloys, uh, which is, you know, really exciting. But we're very focused at the moment there on building that customer base so we can ramp that production up. Now, uh, I recall reading, and correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, Novion in Texas is a, is going to be a customer of yours for uh, alloy. Yes, Novion Magnetics was our first alloy customer. We've, um, we signed a, an initial agreement to produce 100 tonne of product for them between now and March, but mm -hmm. we've been in discussions with them for some time. We're certainly uh, intending for that to be a long-term partnership, and we're working with them at the moment on that long-term agreement. Um, but then the second customer that we announced is USA Rare Earths. Right, and that right. one, we have already announced the, the long-term arrangement, uh, which is a five-year uh, deal that we did with them uh, to be able to provide them with 60% of the feedstock that they need for their still water facility in Oklahoma. You, you're, as far as I know, I don't know of any other uh, company in, in outside of China that's that's doing this. It, let's eliminate Japan for the moment. And when I do that, uh, ASM is the only company I'm aware of in the rare earth sector that's for, that's already shipping metal and uh, alloy. I assume. So th that's th the interesting thing is, and very few people know about this here. You realize that. And we talk endlessly about we've got to vertically integrate, blah, blah, blah. And that's all nonsense here because we have no idea how to do it. 
Okay, so here's my here's my uh, question out of the blue. Are you do you have any interest in licensing your metal making technology uh, outside of? Yes. Lots of opportunities for how we can create value from the IP that we have, uh, both the technologies that we have and the know-how that we've established. Mm -hmm. Because you're right, we are um, in a very unique position. It's not just that we are metallizing um, and alloying, which, as you say, is very unusual, uh, but also that we've actually established an end-to-end -end supply chain that doesn't at any point in that supply chain go through China. Uh, we've got the raw materials set up to be able to come from Vietnam, going into our Korean metals plant and then going on into um, domestic customers there in the States. So I'm certainly not aware of anybody who has uh, either by themselves or through partnership created that end-to-end -end alternate supply chain. Uh, I, I am the... Uh, the uh repository of such information there isn't anyone else take my word for it now i would ask you a question which you will not answer but i'm hoping always hoping can you describe the metal making technology to me if if it's not uh electrolysis of molten salts or if it's not metal thermic reduction yeah i think um you know, just at a high level, what we're doing with the light rare earth, the neodymium praseodymium, is an enhancement of established technologies. Okay. Uh, so that's not where the focus for our innovation is. And similarly for the strip caster, you know, that's technology that we've purchased. Right. Um, the area that we're really focused on that, you know, that innovation work is currently in um, process development using titanium. We're focusing on titanium first just because it's a, a more commercially ready material rather than uh, commissioning it on the heavy rare earths that are a lot more expensive and a lot harder to get hold of. But that technology is the technology we're intending to use to metallize the dysprosium and the terbium and also some of the other critical minerals that we have in the Dubbo uh, resource, the zirconia, the hafnia, et cetera. Um, so, yeah, yeah, that's what we're doing with technology. You you said that you were getting uh, some raw materials from Viet, Vietnam. Are you also planning to bring your Australian properties into production of these raw materials? Exactly. So in the short term, we're looking to um, purchase materials, again, through a strategic partnership in Vietnam, which we're mm. building uh, that so that it can provide materials between now and our Dubbo resource coming online. But, you know, one of the big projects that we're working on, the primary project for ASM, is getting our Dubbo resource in New South Wales, Australia, into production. We've been working on this for many years, uh, so it's very advanced. We have all of the engineering work done. We've got all the environmental approvals in place. Uh, we've got Hyundai Engineering doing the final EPC uh, definition work for us at the moment. Um, and we're really at the point now where we're talking to offtake partners uh, and we're aiming to secure those key offtakes for the materials between now and the end of this calendar year so that we can go into the final round of funding discussions aiming for a final investment decision at the end of next year. Do you have any feeling for where you'll be competitively in pricing? Uh, with the, let's say, Chinese uh, suppliers? Look, I think this is one of the challenges for the industry is to establish what the pricing is for that alternate supply chain. And not just, you know, relative to China per se, but also where the margin actually sits across that supply chain. Because, you know, when when you're in the position as they are in China where you know, that supply chain is pretty much um, owned by the one um, entity, you can move the margin around along that supply chain. But when each piece is owned by a discrete business, you've got to have a lot more uh, maturity uh, in, in the way that you share that uh, margin uh, through each of the different processes. So I think you know, they're conversations that we're having at the moment with our partners, and it's why I speak about partners rather than customers, uh, because I think as we are in this early phase of setting up 
this alternative supply chain, you know, we are actually standing up a new industry. And if we don't do that in a in a collaborative manner, if we don't do it in a way that uh, sensibly thinks about how we ensure that there is margin at e- each step in that supply chain, um, you know, there's no point in having one business uh, without the rest of the supply chain around it. So, you know, th- they are live conversations that are happening at the moment. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, this has been very enlightening, and I have to think about this now. Well, I've been very pleased to chat with you, and uh, you're right. It's a super exciting time, and, mm-hmm. um, you know, what we're we're doing is, is groundbreaking. So, yep, yes. I'd be more than happy to chat with you again. Thanks, Jack. Thank you, Rowena. Thank you very much.